can check this out. Get your calculator out now. Make sure that it is in radians. Remember, that's what we said we started with. Pop your calculator in radians. And get mine in as well. <clears throat> radians, there we go. So, if you pop something into your calculator, choose a small angle, right? We're in radians, but if we want to make this really small, try, I don't know, sine of 0.01, something like that. That's a small angle, isn't it? Like in radians, that's pretty small. Or if you like, put in tan of 0.01. What are you getting out? Can someone actually read off their calculator display to me? If you put in, who put in sine 0.01? Anyone? Yeah, what did you get? Uh, 0.0099. Okay, let me actually state that one more time. 0.00. <laughs> it just keeps on going, right? It does, it does actually, it's likely to change at some point, right? But the point is, see that thing, right? Is it not very, very close to 0 0.01, the input, right? And you can try this out. You can see there's sort of a point at which they start to diverge a little bit, which shouldn't surprise you, because if you think about what y equals x looks like here, and what y equals x looks like here, eventually your sign, do you see, it's just a little bit underneath. Who tried out tan? Did anyone put tan into their calculator? Yeah, Fawad, what did you get when you put tan of whatever? Uh, 0 0.01000. Is that four zeros? Zero, zero. And then there's like a zero. Threes and then a OK, sure. Right. Now have a look, right? Do you see sine? It's just a little bit below what you put in. And tan is just a little bit above what you put in, which is kind of exactly what you ought to expect from the graph. Does this make sense? OK. Now, this is the small angle approximation. But the way we actually state it is slightly different. We bring back this limit language that we had before, okay? And we're actually going to state two different limits, one of these from the left-hand side and the other one from the right-hand side, okay? So here, if you, want to, if you want to put something in a big box, this is what we're going to do. We're going to say the limit as theta approaches zero, because that's sort of overarching this whole thing. We've taken the limit at about this point here and everything else that follows is within that limit uh, of sine theta is approximately equal to the limit as theta approaches zero of theta itself. That's what we've just established. And you even tested it out empirically, right? But what it happens is most interesting, where I'm actually heading from here toward calculus, is more about the ratio between these two limits. So I'm going to divide one side by the other, and I get this. If I divide this both sides by theta, I'm going to get sine theta on theta. What happens? Whew, there's a computer here. What happens to this right-hand side when I divide through by theta? You just get theta over theta, which is 1. And 1 is independent of theta. Do you see that? 1 is independent of theta. So you just get 1. That's the actual limit that ends up being useful to us. Okay? Um, I could rehearse this all over again, but you can see it doesn't take that much imagination to realize you're going to get the same thing with 10, aren't you? So I'm going to say similarly, the limit as theta approaches 0 of tan theta on theta, also equal to 1. And the last thing to note, we're not even going to write this down because it's so um, trivial, but hopefully you can see it. 1 is a useful number when it comes to reciprocals or ratios like this, because 1 is its own reciprocal. right? 1 is 1 over 1. So because I've got sine theta over theta, I could just as easily say the reciprocal of that. right? So I could just as easily say, theta on sine theta, or I could just as easily say theta on tan theta. Does that make sense? So this is the actual result. I'm going to put a big box around it. And I'm going to show you how to use it in a pure context and in applied. So if you, OK, so shall we read it together and piece this together? It says a car travels one kilometer up a road, which is inclined at five degrees to the horizontal. OK, so pause right there. We've got a length, and we've got an angle that we can place onto this diagram. Where am I going to put that angle? It's just that little acute angle, isn't it? It's always going to be, you can actually know in advance pretty much for all of these questions because they're all small angle approximations, you're always going to be drawing sort of a long flat right angle triangle. Okay? So there's my five degrees. Where's that one kilometer going to go? It says driving one kilometer up this thing. Where would you place it? Yeah, I'm going to place it on the hypotenuse. I will admit there is a slight ambiguity in the question when they say you drive up. Right, because you're like up. Which which up do you mean? But then the question itself sort of clears that ambiguity in the question because it says, "Then this is the thing that I want to know." Right? It says, "What are the words? Um, through what vertical distance has the car climbed?" Which is clearly this, right? So I'm going to call this guy H. I'm also going to stop writing one kilometer and I'm going to write 1,000 meters. Can anyone suggest to me what clue in the question tells me that might be more useful? 
Have a look. Yeah, when I'm going to provide this answer, it's going to be in meters, so I might as well get in that form from the get-go, right? So, there's one last thing I need to do. Remember, and I just left it on the board, when we started this off, we drew a circle, so what form of angle were we using? We were using radians. So the last thing I need to do is say, hey, that five degrees, not going to be a useful form to me at the moment. I need to convert that. So can anyone tell me right away what that's going to be? And you can reach through your calculator. You probably don't need to, though, do you? Come on, we're x1. We can do this. What do you multiply by when you're converting from degrees to radians? You multiply by? Is the pi on the top or the bottom? Top, top. It's on the top, right? So it's going to be that times pi on 180, right? Can anyone tell me what 180 divided by 5 is? Come on, you do this all the time. It's going to be 36, right? So this is pi on 36. Come on, especially in complex numbers, you've been doing this enough. You really need to... Anyway, okay. Come on, what are you going to do if you do fifth roots of unity? Anyway, okay. Now, you've got your pi on 36 there. I've got my length, and I'm pretty much ready to go. So this is what I'm trying to find. So which trig ratio, I've only got two really to choose from, am I going to use which connects these? It's just like being back in year nine, isn't it? Okay, so I'm going to say sine. I'm going to say sine of, there's my angle right there, pi on 36. And that is my small angle because pi on 36 is like 0.1-ish because pi is 3.14, right? That's going to be equal to opposite on hypotenuse, my h on 1,000, right? h is going to be exactly equal to 1,000 sine pi on 36. And at this point here, I'm going to say, but... I know that when you take the limit, right, sine theta and theta are basically the same thing, right? So I can say for small theta, h is going to be, not exactly, we saw how we were slightly off, but close enough, approximately equal to 1,000 instead of sine theta, I'm just going to substitute theta, just pi on 36. Uh, I should write multiplication there so it doesn't look like a mixed numeral, okay? Um, I have no idea what... 1,000 lots of pi on 36 is. Has someone already reached for their calculator? Can they give me um, to the nearest... Actually, give me some decimal places. I know it's in the 80s because I already solved this, but I can't remember. Anyone got it? 87.266. 87.266. So we're rounding this off to the nearest meter, so that gives me 87. Okay. So that's, that's not that complicated. You can see it's applied, this, this idea, which is very theoretical, I've applied it to a simple situation.